Rightio. Last nail. Ugh. Beautiful. Ugh. Lay this out then, Pete. Let's do that. So make sure you keep your marks on top. Okay. So we'll flip it around like that. Yep. And then we'll take this one out. All right. So we've got our studs over here. So just make sure we're siding these as we go. And we're going to go bow up for the whole thing. Yes. Fantastic. A couple of studs. You'll notice I've actually already marked no every worries. one of these studs with the bow up with that little arrow, yeah? Fantastic. I don't need to check your work. You don't need to check my work. So sometimes the way that I'll do it is so I might just go through like this and I'll lead them up, I'll stand them up for you and you can just slide them into place once you've got the bows done. So maybe if you're working in a crew, can be the far, the better you work together, the faster you'll get everything done. And sometimes I just look over the studs and if the bow is a really bad bow, I'll put it somewhere where we can actually tie it together with another one and get that bow out. Yep. Yeah? Maybe um, somewhere where you're going to have a double start or something. Yeah, which is Beautiful. a great way of doing it. Awesome. And then minimising the amount of the bow in the middle of the wall. When you've got bow studs, it's really important to try and keep them away from maybe junctions, doorways and things like that, where you really want to keep them as straight as possible. We're one stud short. One stud short. I think the next thing that we need to make sure of is we've got the nail guns, our hearing protection, and then we can start bringing the wall together. Fantastic. Bow. Up. Beautiful. Perfect. It's taking shape now. Taking shape. Let's go. I've got my nail gun and my nails, and I've noticed that I've used 45 mil plate over there, but only 35 mil plate here. Is it okay if I use the 75 mil nails on this one? Because we've got a 35 mil plate, we can get away with the 75 mil nails. Okay. But if we check the Australian standard, whenever you use a 45 mil plate, minimum you'll have to use a 90 mil nail in okay. the top and bottom plates. Rightio, I'm glad so, I asked that. Fantastic. So I'll take the top ends and I'll start nailing that together and you can start taking the bottom. Too easy. Have you got all your PPE? You've got our steel caps well, on? We've, we've both chosen our gun of choice here. Steel caps, safety glasses, hearing protection. Make sure that when you're using nail guns, if anybody else is in the area, you know, make sure they're wearing their PPE as well, because obviously it's not just something that's going to affect you, it's going to affect everyone around you if a nail goes flying. One thing I'm going to make sure is that my studs are right on their mark on my top plate or bottom plate, and that I'm holding my hand far enough back so if one of the nails goes rogue, I'm not going to get it through the knuckle. making sure that they're flush as we go top and bottom as well. So once we've done these, Pete, what's our next step? Well, next we're going to have to cut in some noggins. Okay. Noggins, junction blocks, and just all the other components that are going to really fill out the wall. Okay, so to get set up for noggins, what we need to do is measure the centre point of our wall so if our wall height is exactly 2.7, that means that we need to be going to 1350. So when you're setting out your noggins, 1350 is the maximum spacing you can have between noggins. That's a really good point, Pete, because otherwise oh, we get too far apart and it doesn't stick to the Australian standard anymore. That's it. So a 2.7 wall is a fairly standard size wall. So 1350. Max spacing, so we've got to put this row of noggins right in the middle. If we were doing this wall and it was a three metre high wall, if we put a row of noggins straight through the middle, it'd be at 1500 spacing, so too large. So what we'd have to do then is generally split it up into three and then have two rows of noggins. So one row of noggins right in the guts is going to be perfect for us here. So I'll just give you my string line, flick line. We'll flick that line all the way through. Beautiful. So I've marked it either end, and now we can use the chalk line to mark it through on every stud in the middle. Okay. All good there? Yep. Fantastic. Whenever you measure your noggins, you really want to make sure that you don't measure them in here. 
you always want to measure them along the plate and that'll give you a much more accurate reading of how big they actually want to be. If you mark it or if you measure it in the middle, the studs could have a bow in them. So, you know, if this stud here could be pushed over a little bit to that side and that's not going to give you an accurate measurement of how wide, you, how long your noggin needs to be. But measuring them how Joe is along the plate is going to give you the perfect measurement each time. So I've got our noggins, but in here, it's not exactly a noggin, it's what, you, what I'd call a junction block, and that's just a spacer in between these two studs, and that's just going to work into here where we've got our junction over here. All right, how about, do you want to shoot in the noggins? And I'll shoot in the junctions. Sounds great. I'll just make sure I've got my ear plugs in again. Let's go. the wall, the wall's all shot together, we've got all our timber components in. Next step, square it up and get this cross brace on there. Shall we check our diagonals? Yep. So we want to square up the wall now. Yep. So just making sure that the wall, as we say square, is nice and square rather than being a bit twisted in a bit of a diamond shape. So if you shoot your tape out to me, the easiest way to check the square is to just measure the diagonal. And so we've got 4335. So this has to equal 4335 for it to be square. And it's 4375, which means 4350 would be where we need to be. So can you just stand there? Nope, that's 4360. That's 4360. 43.55, just check it, 43.54, that's very good there Pete. Beautiful. Pete, we've just got this hoop iron set out, are we looking for an idea, a ideal angle to get this in so it's nice and tight? So 45 is the ideal angle, it's on a 45 degree angle that's nice and strong, but uh, anywhere in between 30 and 60 degrees are your limitations. Okay. So that's pretty good where it is there. That's about 45. I'll just make this a little bit longer and then we can cut off the waist a bit later. I'm going to tack that at the bottom. Sure. Where that is, just to hold it. Just with a clout. And then we'll do that again. And we'll cross brace it over, yeah? So what I like to do now, we've got the bottom fixed off. The top here. I'm just going to use a framing nail in the top. And I'm not going to nail that all the way home. I'm just going to put it in about halfway and then just bend it over. So it's easy for me to take out later on. And I'll do the same out this way. So we've got everything in position that we need to. We've got a good angle of everything. So what we need to do now is just bend those ends around slightly and we can bring this wall up and put it into position. Just gonna bend that over and chuck a couple through the bottom. We're ready to stand the wall up now, I reckon. Right. Let's get this wall up into position and then we can start plumbing it up and making sure it's all braced. Beautiful. Let's do it. All right, guys. So while Joe's finishing off chopping the last few studs for this wall, I'm going to start laying out here.
We've got two more studs to drop in, do we? Instead of cutting a nog like the rest of these, 55 mil wide, which when we shoot it with the nail gun, it's likely to explode. It's better for us to do a rip at 55 mil and then put them in vertical and they're a lot stronger that way. Okay. Oh good, what do you reckon? That's looking beautiful, Pete. One thing we're missing is our header for our door. Okay. So what do you mean by header for the door, Pete? So what we've got in here is we're setting out, it's actually a large sliding door that goes in here. So when we marked it out on the plates before, we set it out for a two meter wide opening or two meter wide door. So two meters and 20 mil opening to give us 10 mil either side. So the door is, the door frame itself is 2100. Tall. So 2120 in height. 2120, and that will give us 10 mil below and 10 mil above our opening. So we want to make sure we're hooked onto the bottom of the bottom plate, not onto the bottom of the stud. Radio. And we'll mark 2120. Yep. And that will be the bottom of our head. All right, that one's all done. We'll square it up and then she's ready to stand up. All right, 42, 42. 42, 55. So 48, 42, 48 is what we're looking for. 42, 49. Yep, great. Awesome, so if you're good like Joe, you can just find the average, the difference in between those two um, diagonals and get them the same. The other way to do it would be, if you're not that great at maths or if you want to do it on paper, whatever your measurement of that one is, one diagonal, add it to whatever your other diagonal is and then divide it by two and that's what you should have. Yes, on both sides. perfect, yep. Beautiful, all right, so ready to stand this one off, stand this one up. We'll fix it up there. 